on tonight's show. We have clinical social worker and therapist, Natasha Mosby. And now for your host, Cool Paul. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Kicking It With Cool Car Show. I am your host, Cool Car. Every Tuesday night, we are here at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, y'all. And I thank you guys for tuning in. If you're catching this on the replay, thank you, thank you, thank you for catching it on the replay. It's all the same. It's all the same love. Um, if there's anybody that's watching that who this is your first time, I invite you to subscribe so I can continue bringing this value to you. I have some great people that come on here telling their stories. Um, man, I'm telling you. Listen, last week... I had Suki Gale. She's a spiritual lifestyle influencer. And if you haven't tapped into that, listen, it's a whole nother realm. So if you don't even understand what that is, I'm not going to explain it to you. Go check out the episode 95. It's streaming right now on my YouTube channel. Um, all of the links to get in, in touch with her is in the description. So if you are intrigued, you want to know more, she's an open book. Trust me, you can reach out to her. She's very personable. All right. But this week, Man, listen, something that it's a headline like every day, mental health, depression, clinical, listen, mental health is something that's like really, really, it's, it's ravaging right now, right? So I have somebody who can combat that. I got somebody who's going to dive deep into it. And, and for our community, we, we, we tend to run from it. So I'm trying to bring people on here that can get you, you know, over that hump, kind of warm you up and then spread some knowledge to you. Cause sometimes it's just lack of information that will keep you astray. And you know, you may need to go see somebody. All right. So without further ado, I got somebody for you. Her name is Natasha Mosby. Yes, she is a doctor. I I'm going to say she's a doctor. She she's working on her doctorate. I do know, but she is a doctor. She is a professor. She is clinical y'all. This is not somebody I pulled off the street. <laughs> and I'm trying to give you a shoulder to cry on. No, she's she's really doing this. Uh, she's living this. She has her own clinic and everything. All right. So without further ado, I'm going to bring her in like I do. And then uh, we'll dive in. Let's get it, y'all. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome Natasha Mosby to the show. Thank you so much for coming on, Natasha. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Oh <laughs> uh, yes, and and listen, I was telling them that you are you the real deal. Like you're you're really doing this. You're living this. This is your profession. Yes. And you, I know you've seen a lot. You do a lot. I know you got your degrees, all that. So give people a little back, you know, give them a little history, a little background, just so they, you know, give them your credentials so they know you, you know what I mean? <laughs> um, so I am a licensed clinical social worker. Um, got my degree at LSU. Um, so I think I'm about the year now. So it's a little over 20 something years. Um, undergrad, I went to Southern University and I have a dual major in criminal justice and sociology and then also LSU for my MSW. Okay. Right now, I am in the process um, of my PhD, and it is in health psychology, so an LCSW. So what that means, I do clinical do clinical work, and I've been doing that for some time now. Okay. Um, I teach here at UNL um, at UNLV in our School of Social Work Master's Program. Um, I'm the coordinator for our Integrated Health Scholarship. I supervise students, post their their license, so they can become clinical. Okay. Um, but I have a private practice, and I supervise agencies, and you know. And what's um, the name of your private practice? So I, my private practice is Health and Wellness Integrated Healthcare. Okay. Um, I do believe you can't service one without the other. So I was talking a little bit earlier, just I got a little bit of, of Suki, Suki, right? Mm -hmm. Her clip, and I was like, yes, we cannot service the mind without looking at the the, the psychological and without looking at the physical. Yeah. Um, so that's what I do in my private practice. So integrated healthcare. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So real quick, 
what are some of uh, we're gonna we're gonna jump right in what are <laughs> what, what is like the biggest myth or misconception <gasps> about therapy oh goodness what's the first thing that comes to your mind like what do you hear what do you hear when people um, try to negate the fact that they need to go there there is still a stigma around mental health right so when people sick hear the word mental health they're like oh mental health but guess what we all have mental health just yes. like we have physical health. Yes. So yes. the stigma I hear is I'm crazy. There's something wrong with me. <laughs> and I'm like, mm, no, right? Yeah. Um, I love just to kind of just in full disclosure tell folks, I'm in therapy. I'm a therapist in therapy. Yeah. I think it's important that we have a space and place that we can sit and kind of process our thought feelings and how yeah. all that stuff is connected. So I think that one of those myths is that I'm crazy. Um, I will say in the religious community, mm -hmm. um, there is that stigma around, you know, mental health and, you know, their concept of what that means in terms of their own religious beliefs. Right, I think right. sometimes that become, becomes an issue. Um, barriers. I'm going to say that. Right. So accessibility. Where do I find a therapist? Right. Where do I find a therapist that look like me? So we have issues around finding competent, culturally competent clinicians in our communities. Yeah. yeah. Um, now, payment. Now, there's so many, there's so many. Do you do you think that people put up mental barriers though? Because some people, they know they need to go, but it's like nah, nah, nah. Just like you know, you need to go to the doctor, but you keep putting it off. You keep putting it off. You know, for like anything, you know, physical, physical or whatever. They keep putting it off. So I think there's mental barriers too. You find excuses and just keep prolonging it, and then it gets worse. Just like health, you know, if you can't, mm -hmm. you know, cancer or anything in its early stages. You got a better chance of beating it, but you keep putting it off. You keep putting it off. You're feeling this illness. You're feeling this ailment. You're hurt. You got a blunt over here. And it's like, nah, I need to go poo. You know, whatever. I don't know. But you know what I'm saying? It's, I think there's mental barriers, too. And people are just in denial. And, and they're in fear. There it is. And I, I, I honestly think that some of the mental barriers may be fear. Right? Yeah. Judge. No one want to feel judged. Right? You're going, you're going in. And how I look at it, you're going in talking to a complete stranger. Yeah about yourself that's scary yeah that yeah. could be scary yeah. um especially when we don't really understand what what is there what do i do in there right how much of myself do i disclose and to a complete stranger what do you do with this information when i talk to you about it and then there's the ego too especially mm -hmm. for men it's like i don't want to feel weak i don't want to feel like a little b you know right. and, you know <laughs> you, you, i don't want to get in there and start crying because they know they know they'll probably start crying because there's some things that's tugging at them or you know there's some wounds that hasn't healed and they know they'll get in there and start crying and they're running from it. But that's yeah. what you need, fool. You know what I'm saying? That's what you need. So and I'm, I'm going to say this, Eric. I, um, I have a high caseload of, of males, right? And you're right. They get in. You know, at first it's this kind of this, you know, toughness. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, we're human, right? Exactly. Um, because I understand, too, some of those those systems that plays a part in this. I'm tough. I don't need therapy. Right. You just think about how we raise young boys, yeah. right? Especially young men of color. Yeah. A lot of us feel we have to put on that facade. It ain't the fact that we want to. We mm -hmm. feel like we have to, to survive. Yep. You know? And, and, and they, need to, they need to know there's a safe place for them to let Absolutely. all that out, man. Absolutely. I ain't going to lie. Listen, my dog died the other day. I cried like a baby. Good. <laughs> I a baby it's for two days straight. But yes. I'm going to say this, though. There was some underlying things in there, some unhealed wounds from, mm -hmm. from, you know, trauma that I had when I was a kid, losing so many people. You know, I lost my mom when I was nine years old. You know what I'm saying? Then I lost my aunt, who was like my second mother, when I was still a teen. Yes. You know? And just oh, on true. on down the line. I mean, I've lost so many people, and I just don't think I healed from it. And that just, man, I lost my dog, man. You know, that was my little buddy. And man, it just it just brought it all out of me, all out of me. And I just told my wife, I'm like, babe, it, it's more than that. I'm, yeah. So, I, Lee, can I ask you this? Now, now I'm playing therapist here. How did you feel afterwards, though? I feel great. I feel light. I feel like, um, I kind of remedied some, I remedied some things that I was dealing with. I and, and, and here's the thing. I'm always real with myself. I know I'm dealing with something. Have I seen a therapist? No, but I'm real with myself. I know I'm dealing with some things and it's always a thought in my mind like, man, what is it? And I probably do need to go speak to somebody because I want to get over this hump. You know, humps that nobody knows but me, you know, and, and I want to push through that. And I'm like, yo, I, I probably do need to go see somebody. But man, after crying for two days straight, I think some of that corrected itself. 
Yes. I There's really, really do. In that, right? It's power in crying. Yeah. There's been times I'm in sessions with folks that I don't, I may not speak. They'll cry. And I just sit and hold space for them. I'm just yeah. sitting there. So that's why I excited you feel out the words because it can be refreshing. It can be, you know, some, some self-aware. Yeah. But the difference is you are self-aware to know there are some other things that link to this, this crying for me. Yeah. Like loss. Yeah. That's another you know, loss. That hurts. I think, um, and real quick, I don't know, like, I like to pray at the beginning of my shows and we just dove mm -hmm. right in. So I want to go back to doing that. You okay with that? I'm okay with that. Okay, yes, cool. Sir. We're going to pray, but don't say one more thing. Um, I think I had a lot of frustration. And I didn't know where it was coming from because I'm very impatient. I, I, I don't have any patience. And I think them two days helped me a little bit. Mm. A bit calmer, a little bit more gentle in my approach. You know, I feel it. Like I feel it, you know, it's not gonna change overnight, but I feel it in me. You know what I'm saying? I feel it in me. Like I really do like, man, I just, I don't know. I'm just moving. Dude. Can, I, like, can I say something before you pray? Yeah, yeah, of course energy that you have to get out yeah absolutely. i say pressure bust pipes yes right? so you had all this pressure in that crying yep just the physical stuff that was going on emotionally and mentally man i'm telling you because, and listen, <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah and listen i'm all about energy like i'm the type of person where like i really felt like i should have went into psychology because i could read a person as soon as they walk into the room the energy you know i know how to gauge them i know how to deal with them whatever people always came to me to talk to me when i was in college and i, I would get to the root of their problem like that just give me a couple things and I get it for them. And it could be something they've been dealing with their whole entire life and they never saw it. And I could get to it just like that. Right. So energy is like key for me. So, yes, you, you're right on. Like I knew that I had that built up in me and I had to let it out. And I'm telling you, man, when I cried, it 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 it, it was from the soul. Like I've never felt that much. I've never felt it that much. Like, I, I can't even explain it, but I've never felt it that way. I've never cried from my core like that because I held back. Even when my mother died, when my father died, everybody, like, I don't really feel like I cried from my core. Mm -hmm. And them two days, oh, my God. Man. Oh, my God. I'm telling you. And, and man, listen, I was in Walmart talking to, like, my brother, balling on the phone. And then he was like, man, you know, you you, you, uh, you need me to let you go. I'm like, nah, bro, it ain't going to get no worse than this. I'm in Walmart crying, but I don't care. I told a client, I said, wherever you need to be, be in it. <laughs> yeah. Because you need that, right? I'm like, oh, yeah. this had this, it's a breakthrough. Yeah. It's a breakthrough. It's a breakthrough. Man, oh, man, I needed that. I really did. I yeah. needed it. So, yeah, thank God. Thank God. Thank God. He works, man. He works. Mm -hmm. Let's give him the glory real quick. Uh, Heavenly Father, we just thank you for just allowing us to come together and, and, and talk intellectually about uh, something so near and dear, Heavenly Father, Jesus, to everybody. Everybody's going through something, Heavenly Father, Jesus. We just want to put this out on the table for everybody to so just collect and grab and, and try to get an understanding and uh, just to, to basically self-help themselves, Heavenly Father. We just thank you for this time. We thank you for uh, just awaking us up this morning, Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus. We thank you for good health. We just thank you for family. We thank you for love. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, we just give you all the praise, all the love, all the glory, and all the victory in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Awesome. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. <laughs> oh, man. So for you, how, how, easy is, how easy is it for you to gauge people's emotions and, and their tendencies when they're first coming to you? And I'm, I'm going somewhere with this, but... Okay. Yeah. Um, I say this, I have a ritual. Okay. Right? Um, I believe I have to be grounded first. Mm -hmm. Right. Cause you know, I do believe in what's going on with me, right. As the clinician, as someone they're coming to, they can feel that, mm -hmm. Right. So I'm very mindful of how I'm even coming into a room, even into the office. Mm. Um, so I kind of just do some ground and I don't listen to music on my way in. I just kind of do some meditative stuff and, um, I do ask for guidance. Okay. And being present. I, I speak. I speak of the things that I'm, that I'm like manifestation, right? Looking for guidance, looking for peace, looking to, to ground me. Yeah. Um, I can typically tell when I'm calling people back for an assessment, right? If, especially if it's a couple mm -hmm. who, you know, initiated <laughs> the session, right? Okay. Um, I can typically tell, you know, which one of those two. For young kids, I can typically tell if it's a force, like mom, dad said, I got to be in therapy versus. I've been waiting for my mom or dad or grandma to take me here. Right. Um, and I just try to normalize it, right? I'm I'm not going in with, oh, tell me, tell me what you're here, you know? I, I'm yeah. Just, hey, 
What's up? Yeah. <laughs> right? yeah. So I tell folks all the time, I am a clinician, but I'm not your typical, um, I'm not your typical. Yeah, you want you want them to feel comfortable, keep it casual, so they'll open up to you. That's the same thing I was telling you before the show, right? Like I just keep it casual, make them comfortable, and they'll be open. They'll be transparent. You know, I I, I will let them know what I'm gonna do. I think to you know your first time into therapy can be scary. Mm-hmm. So I'm truly walking people through my process. Like, okay, this is what we're gonna do. I just want to know who you are, right? Yeah. You get to ask me questions. I want you to ask me some things that I may and I may not answer, right? Okay. So I'm kind of you know. I'm, <laughs> Should have been a comedian in my other life, but I, I want them to see me in my authentic self, but also professional. You no, know, like, okay. And I can usually tell if I start to re- get that rapport when they sit back, mm-hmm. right? Something happens with the shoulders, something happens with them sitting back, right? You know, they start to look around more, and you know, and I'm checking in with them. I'm constantly saying, or you know, not constantly, but I'm just checking in, right? So if I'm going to be doing some writing, I'm letting them know I got to write this stuff down because, you know, I'm, you know, midway 50, so I need to remember this. <laughs> You know, I joke about things, but I, I, I try to make that first time meeting me where they know they're going to be okay. Yeah. And it's 45 minutes to an hour, two hours, this is your space. Yeah. Right? I'm hold the space, and we're going to get some information, and we're going to go from there. Okay. Yeah. And, and, you know, we, like I said, our community, we have all types of excuses. It's either, you know, financial or uh, the ego or whatever. How accessible is therapy to people? Because... You know, people have that fear of I don't want to get a thousand dollar, two thousand dollar bill. Is is therapy covered under most people's medical insurance policies? Yes. Okay. Yes, it is. So one thing that you have to find out is you know is it's who's on your provider, right? So you know you have you get your your information in terms of your insurance, and you ask what are some approved therapists underneath my provider type? I mean, underneath your insurance. Okay. And then you have to find out what's your copayment. Right. <laughs> so I think that sometimes. Um, get to people. Um, yes, I take insurance, but I also take I also take you know private cash pay. Right. Um, I do sliding scales with some of my clients that says, especially during this pandemic. Yeah. Right. Yeah. There was no way in the world I was going to be discharging folks left and right because they lost their job. That to me that's not helpful. Right. Um, hell, I was joking. I said I probably didn't see more free clients than I have seen paid <laughs> paid clients. But um, is it accessible? Yes. But then we have to define what's accessible. Okay. Right. So, are we talking about accessible financially, or are we talking about location? Right. Are we no, talking fi- about financially, because most people, financially, yeah. most people are just under the impression that it's expensive. They don't. They, they just don't know. They don't know. They don't have the information, okay. and then they're already scared, so they don't even inquire. But they yes. already have it in their mind, like, man, I ain't trying to pay all that money. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's even, you know, even so much as like going to like a chiropractor or something like that. You know, people were like, I ain't paying all that money. They don't know that you can get some of that stuff covered under their, you know, under your insurance. You just don't know. So you don't you even do attempt homework. to inquire. That's right. You have to do the homework. You got to figure it out. You got to, yeah. just like we do anything else, right? So we call, we find out who's under my provider and asking what's the copayment. Right? Yeah. I look at copayments as an investment in yourself. Yeah, it's not, it's not anybody's financial stuff, but I'm thinking, hey, if I can put this $30, $40 aside because that's what I need to do to make sure I'm seeing my my therapist. Right. Put that $30, $40 aside because that's my one hour, you know what I'm saying, mm-hmm. to be present in, in the process of my stuff. Yeah. So. And if listen, this is the way I think about things. So mm-hmm. you're going to spend the $40 anyway. Some, anyway. Somehow you're going to spend that $40, right? That's right. So why not invest that $40 into your mental health yeah. so yeah. that you can go and enjoy these fruits of your labor that you go buy Mm-hmm. with a clear sound mind That's right. you try because because now sometimes people are trying to band-aid what they're going through by going shopping Absolutely. but you're really enjoying it because mm-hmm. your mind ain't right that's right but take that little fifty dollars it's a distraction huh it's a distraction yeah, yeah. exactly mm-hmm. you run around here you got this and louis and whatever and what you know and jordan's and look hell. Me, meanwhile i'm at target finding the best <laughs> <laughs> right I just can't. I mean, it's each its own, but I just, that's not my. Yeah. yeah I like to say, like, ribeye. people, I, people. I, I invest, are, give me a good ribeye. I invest in it. <laughs> right. Right. I like yeah. to say people around here, you know, they walk around with up that upside down smiles inside, you know? Yeah, yeah. You're looking good on the outside, but you're really frowning inside, you know? You hurting. And I'm going to tell you, it bleeds out eventually. It's going to come out. Oh, yeah. What's in you coming out of you. Yeah. That's why you see some people just blowing up and be like, I've never seen them mm-hmm. like that or act like that no they're they're really a good person 
Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You've heard the stories. Like, you know, oh, yeah. he don't like that. You know, she's not like that. She's a good person. Yeah, well, she was going through some shit. <laughs> right. She was numbing, right? Yeah. Well, who was numbing? Yeah. Just like anything else, you shake that stuff up long enough, it's coming out. Yeah. It's coming out. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> well, invest in yourself, people. You got to. I, I find it. It's an investment. It's yeah. an investment into my overall well being, is how I look at it. Yeah. And you said you said that you do see a therapist, and I was going to ask you that. Like, who, how do you decompress? Who take care, who who's taking care of Natasha after everybody's coming in dumping on you? I'm so I'm so asking that question. Every night. <laughs> um, I I will say this: I have one hell of a support system. I, I do, okay. um, and this this is critical for me because I do a lot with with all you know all genders. But I'm speaking more to to women. Okay. Don't leave out your friends and those support systems, right? Because we do get busy. We get busy in our day-to-day life. You know, I got three kids. I'm married. I've been married for years, working. But we cannot forget those people that are just, that's been there. Yeah. We need to tap back in with them sometime, right? Yeah. Um, so for me, I, I tell people I'm a therapist in therapy. And um, there, there doesn't have to be anything wrong with you doing the therapy. Now, are there times where I'm like, oh, I'm about to lose my shit and I need to go to therapy? <laughs> yes. Right? <laughs> but, you know. For me, it's a place to do that. Just kind of decompress. Right. Uh, so therapy, I have, you know, I lost my mom, you know, uh, mm-hmm. we're coming up on the anniversary of, of her loss. And for me, this time of the year to be completely transparent is hard. Right. So there is, before I even read this book, it's a book called The Body Keeps a Score. So when you're going through traumatic things, guess what? Physically, you start to have some reactions around that time, around that time of the trauma. Yeah. Um, losing my mom was difficult for me. So I know around September, October, even early November, I kind of get in these, kind of have some of my, my dips. Right? Yeah. Um, and so in 2010, I was like, you know, when I lost her, I said, I need to see somebody. But even for a clinician, that was hard because I'm thinking I should know this. I specialize in trauma work. I do. I do mm. grief. That's that ego. Yeah, right? that ego. So I was like, nah, I need to be on the other side of that couch. <laughs> I need to be a <laughs> Um, so I, I, I have my moments where I'm in therapy, maybe six months out of the year and I take a little break. And when I'm going into different transitions in my life, I'm back in there. Right. Yeah. Um, so my therapist, my, my girlfriend, um, family members, my husband, and I'm going to say at the core of that myself, yeah. I, I purposely seek out things that I can do outside of therapy, outside of relationships that I can do for myself. Right. So meditation, grounding techniques, hell, I do quiet moments where I don't want to be bothered with people. Yeah. Right? So I do like my isolation. <laughs> that's my, that's I my. I love my isolation. So Ooh. I was going to say something to. Like people drain me, Eric. I'm going to say. <laughs> Man, listen, you deal with them on a daily on that level. So I know you drain and I be drained just dealing in life. <laughs> so I will, I listen, I will go black some days. I don't return phone calls. It's not to be hurtful, but I need to fill my cup. Right? Yeah. I need to just be like, just give me a moment just to get back in my own head, my own body. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I, I was going to say, I was going to speak to you saying, uh, have your support system. And what happens a lot of times is when somebody's going through something, they shut people out. Right. Yeah. And then when they come to their senses and they really, really need them people, they're not there because them yeah. people are now feeling some type of way because you didn't communicate what you were going through. They just thinking you're acting a little funny. Mm-hmm. But you got to you got to stay there. You got to stay locked in with them. Regardless of what you're going through, you got to stay locked in with them. The real ones, the ones that you know, they got you. you know? And I'm, I'm going to say this, and you don't even have to say what you are going through. It yeah. can be simply, I got, I'm got, i here, but I'm, I'm not in a good space right now. Yeah. Right? Yep. Um, I feel like the people that know you, that are, are connected to you spiritually, because I do believe there's sometimes a spiritual connection, mm-hmm. all of a sudden they'll start calling and texting. Yeah. Right? So my best friend, her name is Erica. <laughs> um, Erica, you know, we don't talk every day. And she lives in New Orleans. But when she, every now and again, I can be going through something. And I am very kind of like, okay, I got this. Yeah. And I get a text from her. And I'm like, I ain't in a good place. <laughs> we're, we're through this, right? Yeah. Um, but you do. You, you have to just let them know I'm, I'm, a, I'm here. But if I, if I need you, I'll reach out. Right? Um, it worked both ways. You cannot disappear on folks and just pop back up and think they're okay too, because they're trying to figure out why'd you ghost me? Exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. It's okay to be transparent with people that you are close to. We, we gotta let people in. Yeah, you do. You, you do. We can't in. do it alone, man. Nothing is done alone. You can't do it alone. 
Mm-hmm. You know, you can get your you can get your time in, but you can't yeah. do it alone. Yeah. And I tell folks, you know, I'm gonna be off the grid for a little bit. You know, check yeah. in with. You. Yeah. Would you say that? Would you say that being able to read people? You know, because you said you 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 kind of ground yourself and come in there because like if you can't help yourself, you can't help them, right? But do you think that it's a it's it's a learned skill or that's something that's just you just have that? You know, being able to just read people and kind of fill them out and know where to go with it and so that you can tailor you know the plan for them and for what they're dealing with and not a one size fit all because that was going to be another question like just answer that first and we'll go into okay. <laughs> well, well i think it's a a learned skill okay i'm struggling with that one um i think that some people are very so when we talk about just this energy right this um gifts i call it gifts i you know i was I think some of them just have that gift. Yeah. Just have that gift. And in this, you know, in the, in the church or in the spiritual world or the biblical world, we say gift of discernment. Yeah. Right? On the other thing, on the other side, we call it energy and all of that stuff, reading spirits. I don't know. I, I don't know. I know because I teach, I do teach in the field of social work. And there are moments I'm in class and I'm looking at these students and I'm thinking to myself, they got it or she got it or he got it. Mm-hmm. I just yeah. think it's something innate. It's something yeah. in us. It is um, something. It is something. And and I asked that. I asked that because experiences can help it. Huh? Experiences help, right? Yeah. So if I've gone through some things, I think it kind of opens you up to be more compassionate if you allow it to be. But I can't. I feel personally that you cannot meet people and, and kind of be there with them if you're not in a space yeah. grounded, yeah. right, to be there because you're opening yourself up when you do that in a sense. Right. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. For sure. And I, I was asking that question because, you know, like I said, like people always came to me and I can get to the root. And I've never had any training. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's, but I'm very, very, very spiritual and intuitive and in tune with, yes. you know what I mean? So, yeah. It's a gift and a curse, though. <laughs> it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is. It can be. Yeah. But yeah. I, but I commend you. For, for for doing God's work, how about that? <laughs> well, thank you. It's, it is. It's and I to me it is tapping in with the Most High a lot. Cause it's so you know, yeah. and that's my support system. Yeah, cause it's selfless work because you are a human being and you are dealing with some of the same things that these people are coming in to talk to you about. You know, yeah. but you got to set that aside at the time and focus on them. So it's you know, yeah, man. I was, I was talking to a student the other day and she go. Um, you know, she was struggling. She goes, how do you do this? And I said, this is what you just said. I, ha- I had to learn to departmentalize a little bit, but you had to bring yourself back together. Yeah. You stay too far out here, you lose who you are, Yeah. right? And I think that's, for, that's what I'm thinking. For me, that self-care, that grounding, that connecting back to the most high for me, the being in nature, you know, being walking, that helps me. That helps me get back grounded spiritually, mentally, and physically. Yeah. Uh, but you got to deal with your stuff in this field, right? Yeah. Got to deal with your stuff before I go deal with somebody else's stuff. And that's that's that can be a challenge. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Mm-hmm. Now I was getting to a second question earlier, so I hear a lot of people say who are reluctant to go, but when they do go, they feel like it wasn't effective. They feel like they got a therapist that was like a snapback, one size fit all, instead of a, a fitted cap. You right. know, that tailored the, the tailored the whole meeting for that person's issues or whatever it is why is that are are there therapists that do that and then if you do encounter a therapist like that how do you go and seek out another one that you can truly say that's gonna help you because sometimes with us we're already reluctant it's only one shot we go in there i wasn't expected that's it it's a wrap they're not going back so yeah (laughs) so yeah speak Um, to that do i think there's therapists like that yes i do think we have clinicians in this field um, they're kind of like a cookie cutter, yeah. right? Just kind of straight out the. And it's not to knock any any clinician, but you know, if it's in a book, this is what it is. Yeah. And I tell students all the time. I said, this book stuff is theory. This theory. Hmm? In there, that that room, that's the practice. Like, yeah. That's that's the that's it. Yeah. Read it, take it in, whatever. Um. 
for the person experiencing that. And I'm gonna say this: I yes, you know, the first sessions I let people know what we're doing on purpose. Okay. Because some folks come to therapy thinking, okay, that first meeting, I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna tell them about my depression, anxiety, PTSD, and they're gonna just give me some skills. I'm like, that's not what my first meeting is about, right? Okay. So I'm like, the first day you meet me, we're doing paperwork, and they're like, what? <laughs> right? It's <laughs> an assessment. Right. Yeah. And that's when people have an expectation about what they're getting into going in, they're not they're not coming to see me thinking, fix my kid, right? Fix my spouse, and I don't I don't fix people either, right? right. So um, I let people know this first meeting we do an assessment. I'm getting to know who you are. You're getting to know who I am. That's gonna take about an hour, maybe two. Yeah. Our second session, we doing some we talking about what we want to work on. Um, the therapist got to check in with people, right? I can I can tell going back to the whole discernment and, and all that stuff, mm-hmm. I can tell them the assessment when people are starting to get annoyed and I stop. And I'm like, what's happening right now? Mm. So I'm, I'm not going to, I have a hard time just going through the process to go through it without addressing what's happening in the process, if that makes sense. Yeah. So I'm going to stop. I'm going to put my pen down or whatever and I'm going to say, check in with me. Mm. And I think when, when you do that, I've noticed people feel like, whoa, like I, I saw that you know, sad look. I saw the, the yeah. The so they so they know it's not yeah. So like, they know you're not one of the cookie cutters. That's right. That's right. The cookie cutter is gonna miss all that. They're just gonna go bullet point, bullet point, bullet point, bullet point. Okay, we covered that. We hit that. We hit that. Right. Check, 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 check. There's there's times even in my first those first meetings I say we may not get through this entire assessment today, and that's okay because I may have to stop and check in with you. I may have to skip the session because you're not. I mean, not a session, but a a part of that assessment because you're not ready to go there with me yet. Yeah. And I want them to know it's okay. Um, so yes, I believe there are clinicians that are so boop on getting the data mm-hmm. that they miss the connection. Yeah. So it's almost like you've lost them already. Already. Because they, they're there to, they're there thinking they're gonna come in and just lay it on you and they need mm-hmm. help. And it's like nope, paperwork, this and and now it's like, ugh, this is robotic, yeah. this is mechanical, this is what I thought you would do. You know, mm-hmm. this is why I didn't want to come here in the first place. It's and a I business. It. I explain it, and I and I say out loud before I do that assessment. I ask them what their thoughts about therapy. I think clinicians don't always ask that question. Yeah. Right? Have you been here before? Some folks have not, and I said, well, tell me what you think therapy is. Mm, okay. And they're like, oh, you know, you gonna you gonna give me a diagnosis? I'm like, I am. <laughs> Maybe I don't. Maybe I don't diagnose you. Right. Right. Maybe if I just hold this space for you, we talk about what got you what got you in. Now your insurance company is gonna ask for a diagnosis. Right. Right. Uh, but I am very, I'm very um, transparent. Very transparent. Um, I seeing kids with their moms and dads. I'm transparent there too. Right. I tell parents all the time. I don't see your kid without seeing you. Yeah. 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 All this stuff is connected. Yeah. Even if you're saying there's behavior problems, like, you know, not blaming parents, but the apple don't fall far from the tree. <laughs> right. Yeah. So I address the root. <laughs> right. This is the byproduct. <laughs> this is the apple. You the right. tree. So let's let's call, come in here. So they kind of looking like, oh, I just can't drop my kid off and you go do a session and I pick him up. No, oh, hmm. that's a liability. Yeah. So I, um, there's moments I may have a one on one with your kid, but there is going to be coming back and we're doing some family work. Right. right? Um, but to go to your second question, what do you do? I, I think to talk, you got to say that you have to tell that clinician they're not. I'm not super superwoman. Right. Right. I don't advise. I like when clients challenge me. I like when they say, Tasha, last week, suck that ass, excuse my language. <laughs> right? I want them to tell me that assignment yeah. you gave me was dumb. And that's talking wow. about it. So, okay, let's go back to the drawing board then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, hopefully, clinicians de- develop that rapport with clients so they feel comfortable saying that to them. Yeah, instead of walking out of there and then they go yeah. to everybody else. Like, eh, they're just so they won't come back. They, won't, they will not come back. No, they're not going back. They're not coming back. I just I just dealt with somebody who was like, man, I don't really know. It kind of they just barely scratched the surface. I I don't think it works for me. I'm just like, how many times do they go? Do you know? Uh, I think twice, maybe twice, but they might have skipped the second one. <laughs> yeah, see, see, yeah. I'm yeah. I'm very um, I, I'm visual, so in some of my sessions I would draw things so I can talk about layers, right? Just like an onion. And I think when people have that visual, like. Guess what? You've been with this for 10, 15, maybe 20 years. This is my first day, right? right. My first time meeting you and yeah. looking at this beautiful masterpiece you have in front of me. Yeah. So now I need to go do some digging. I need to go in there and see what's going on. And they like, 
oh, you're going to dig. We're going to dig together, right? right. So I, I like people to know this is a process. This is not you just come in and I have a magical, I wish I did, right? Like this magical wand to make things right. That's that's not what I do. What And I know this is like subjective, very subjective, but like on average, I guess, how many sessions does it take for someone to really get a breakthrough? And I know that's super subjective because somebody might be dealing with something so deeply rooted, it might take you a year's time before they come around. But just on average, someone who comes in that is not, you know, not badly battered and bruised and, you know, what's, what's the average amount of sessions? So um, my style, I'm always asking what that looks like, right? So when clients tell me I want to feel better, what does that look like? So in order for me to help you, yeah. help you, yourself, <laughs> feel better, I need to know, get, tell me, does it mean I'm getting up and I'm taking showers every day? Does it mean um, get, going to work? Does it mean I'm um, talking to my family? So the, the client and I, we develop a treatment plan. Okay. Right? So in that, and I know some people are like, oh, treatment plan. That's our way of, that's, that's our way of judging. So if you tell me six days a week, I want to go work out, and you only doing it two times. I'm like, we ain't meeting our goal, right? We need to look at that differently. Yeah. Um, it depends on how we define, you know, what that thing is. So if it's if we can put down some goals and some some objectives, boom, we can work on it. But still, that's superficial. Yeah. That's superficial. Um, I've seen clients have aha, I call them aha moments. Mm-hmm. Aha moments, probably about our fifth session, fifth or sixth session. That doesn't include our intake. So right. this is six weeks in. This is six weeks in, yeah. I've seen some aha moments. I've seen clients become taken off some of the, I call it the armor, by that 13th session. Because mm-hmm. I can tell you just come, you know, this is surface for you. Right. Like, just talking about, oh, yeah, how are we doing? But now let's talk about this underneath here. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. So... I have some clients, depending on the level of distress and, and trauma and seeing folks like me probably in the past, we probably get here maybe in 90 days. <laughs> oh, man. And that don't mean that we did, we just got here. We didn't get the work here yet. Right. Yeah. And I am so, I and I let clients know, too, like, I think we just picked on something. Right? Yeah. So I say it so they know, like, shit, I, I didn't talk myself underneath here and now she see it. Right. Yeah. So I'm, I, um... I, I let them know that. Like I, I see, I see where you're going, but tell me why you're afraid to go to go here. I'm gonna catch you. I'm here, right? But it's scary. Yeah. How do you how do you shoot to yourself too? How do you how do you get people to get past their bad habits to do better? Because some sometimes a lot of times it's self inflicted, you know. And then they got these habits. But see, here's the thing: you're you're going through these sessions with them, and they're withholding. Yeah. their habits on why they're feeling that way they just want you to fix how they're feeling and just tell you listen this is how i feel please help me fix it but won't tell you the habits you know so h- how do you how do you how do you deal with that because you know they're there you just don't know what they are um for me i i, I look at it differently right i look at it as a survival okay so these habits that we've established or or, or use its habits it's, it's survival too it's got us where we where we need to be where we're like okay i can get to work i can mm-hmm. be in this space and socialize but when i leave i want to come apart right you're right um yeah right. so it's like i can i can put this on <laughs> <laughs> damn it and i don't think people always know i don't think they truly know all the time that these are these health behaviors don't work for them so it's about for me understanding what's happening here cognitively Right. right. Um, we can use I use therapy as a place to, to do that. So even when I see them holding back, I'm I'm saying it. I'm saying what's going on right now. Mm-hmm. Right? So for me, for me, a good clinician, you are addressing that right here, right now, sir. And the therapy is where it happens. Yeah. Um, when they shut down, I'm addressing the shutdown. Right. And I'm talking about I can imagine what happened here happens over there. Mm-hmm. So that client and therapist relationship is very symbolic to how they operate outside of your walls too. Mm, okay. I look at body language, right? Yeah. I look at if I say something to them and they kind of like, yeah, sure. And I'm like, mm, nope. That's a go along to get along response. And I don't <laughs> yeah. want you to do that, right? Yeah. Um, 
So, and, it's, and I call them out, but in a gentle way to say, hey, I see it. This is something that we talked about what got you here. Yeah. Let's talk about where, where, where did that come from? Where'd you get those messages about yourself? How do you, how do you deal with, I'll ask you, I'll ask you this later. Cause I want to touch on something you just said. Sometimes they don't know of their habits or, or of their behavior or just routine that, that has gotten them there. Right. So mm -hmm. what, how, what advice can you give to somebody to really kind of self-evaluate to figure out if you do need therapy or you need help? How, how do we do that? Cause we don't even know how to do that. Sometimes we can gauge it on relationships, right? Um, okay. So you know that person always say, everybody, I have no friends, everybody my enemy and everybody this. We need to challenge that because if you're going through new friends every fall, <laughs> maybe they ain't the new, maybe they ain't the friends, right? Right. And I, and I use social media as a joke and I, 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 just, I have to say off of it because I'm diagnosing people <laughs> on social media. <laughs> like, <I'm> like <laughs> oh God. But if every other week, you are having some relationship issues with somebody. Yeah. Right? So relationship is a way of gauging that. Um, how you respond just to your, your own needs. How are you responding to people around you? If it's kids, if it's work, if it's whatever. So relationship stuff. Um, how are you taking care of yourself? Right? I, I do believe that although they may not share it out here, mm -hmm. they know what's happening in here. You always know. You feel it. You 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 like, mm, but we justify, we minimize, but even in it, I still feel like a survival. Yeah. It's like it's scary, right? Um, so I, I have this saying where I tell folks, I give you permission to be your authentic self in this space. And they're like, huh? I give you permission to say the things that you've been thinking up here. I need you to say it. Yeah. I give I, you permission. I think too, um, to kind of answer my own question is it's almost like if someone does if someone if someone were to say to you or ask you like how do you know if you need therapy well guess what? Therapy. mental health <laughs> mental health is like health you know regular health we all go to the doctor you should go to the doctor see him every six months mm -hmm. so i think we all need therapy yeah so that's, when someone like, asks me that i my, my question my answer to that is go to therapy Mm, yeah, so yeah. Says, how do you know you need therapy? I was like, go to therapy. And you know why I say that? Because what's in you will come out. Mm -hmm. Yep. If I'm thinking it, if, if that has come out from here to here, I thought about it. Yeah. But now I'm looking for somebody to confirm it for me. Mm. Right? I'm looking for, we, we constantly looking for people to validate us. Yeah, yeah. Right? So my validation is, if you're asking me, how do you know? Yeah. I want to go. If therapy's on your mind, you might as well go ahead and check on it. <laughs> I say, well, can I help you find a therapist? And they're like, no, I'm just asking. I'm just asking. I said, okay. Well, how do you know? I said, I said, you don't always. But think of it as a, a checkup. Yep. We go get our checkups, right? Yep. We get our physical checkups. We get our, all that good stuff. Go have a checkup. Yeah. Go check mine out. Yes, indeed. How do you deal with irate clients? They may get mad. How do, how do you deal with that? <laughs> Let me sip my tea. Hold on. <laughs> Because it ain't always just crying, I'm sure. Anger serves a purpose, though. Yeah. Right? Um, I've been doing this work for over about 22 years now. And in the beginning, I want to say, oh, you know, discharge him. I don't want to see him anymore. No, that, I, I need to see that anger, too. Because anger serves a purpose. And anger is usually a facility protection factor. Yeah. Um, let's talk about it. You don't get to jump up and leave. You can, but you're still gonna pay me. <laughs> but uh, you know, but I, I, it's interesting because I see that anger with kids, but a lot of adults too. Oh wow! And anger is not always I'm yelling or whatever. It can just be I'm gonna shut down. I'm gonna throw a temper tantrum. Yeah. And I'm I'm gonna address it. I'm gonna say you know, you start off you was relaxed. Now you got your arms folded, your legs crossed. You got your purse on your lap. What's going on? And, and what what is it though? Parents, what what normally triggers that? Mm. I know it's not one thing, but you know, it, it has to be a button. So mm -hmm. what, what, what is it? Is it, is it, um, questions that make them, uh, take ownership? Some of it, some of it, some of it can and others, um, the, the goal is for us, for them to tell me what they think just got triggered. 
right? Mm -hmm. So was it my tone? Was it my, and I try to stay, you know, yeah. like this. Kind of As feel. I started developing rapport with folks, I'm like, now, yeah. we talked about this, right? Mm -hmm. um, I haven't seen adults clients get angry with me. They probably got angry about a situation. And when I'm speaking with them about that situation, I'm tapping on some stuff, right? Yeah. It's like picking at that pain. And it's like, stop, you know, the pain, right? That hurts. And I let them know. And I say to them, I'm going to give you some, some feedback. You ready? And I brace yourself. <laughs> and I, I'm very vocal that way. Yeah. And I say, guess what? This same pattern happened in your last relationship. And that's when I'm like, ah, they I said, okay, well. Yep. I, said, I said, just stay with me for a moment, right? So I walked them through. I said, let's get on this train together, right? And I really make it a visual. Let's get on this train and let's go through and let's look at this. So now it comes back to some accountability. That's hard for some, for some folks. Mm -hmm. And and I'm always going back to what message did you get about yourself that being you know accountable for yourself was a bad thing or or you got you maybe you got in trouble for being for certain things. There's a core to that. Right? Mm. It's not always the anger. It's underneath the anger is something going on. Underneath the sadness, there's something else there. And that's what I'm hoping that we can get to. Yeah. And sometimes it's like, I'm not good enough. <laughs> For them, that's what they're thinking? Some of it, I'm not good enough. I'm not deserving. Mm. Um, abandonment issues. Yeah, that, and I, I was going to say, that stems from somebody telling them they're not good enough or making them feel like they're not good enough. A lot of that. So even, even in all of that... That, that, you know, I, I see a lot of adults that are wounded children. Mm -hmm. That's it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, don't, and don't even know how to deal with it mm -hmm. as an adult. Because, mm -hmm. you know, you patch adult. it up. You keep going. Yeah. You keep yeah. going. So um, there are moments that I will say, especially with my young men, I will say, let me, let's, let's talk to that 10-year-old, right? Let me, let me, tell me about him. You know, they get all calm, they get in their chair, and I'm like, here we go. You know, I'm ready. I'm like, yeah, this is some good stuff, right? And I'm like, I won't tell me about it. Oh, uh, you know, I grew up. No, not where you grew up. Tell me about nights. Tell me about mornings. Tell me about going to school. You know, tell me about your friend. Tell me about that little boy. Yeah. Right? And they start to share, and it's a lot of trauma with that stuff. It's a lot of unresolved trauma. Mm-hmm. I know. I need to go talk, too. <laughs> we think trauma is, you know, people think trauma always oh, is about veterans. No, trauma trauma can affect anyone. It can affect our animals. My dog had a traumatic incident the other day, <laughs> right? So it's, it's, it's normalizing, not minimizing, but normalizing a place where, you know what, I'm human and I have these emotions and I have things that happen to me that contributed to the way I think, contributed to the way I feel, mm. and contributed to the way I respond to people. Yeah. And because all those experiences have shaped who I am now. So now it's about recognizing it. And I don't want to be that anymore. I, that don't serve me anymore. Right. I want, to, I want to do something different. And it'd be something just so simple holding you back, man. Holding you back from greatness. Holding you back from taking steps. Just, yeah. That 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 mental, man, you're in prison up there. Yeah. You're in prison up there, yeah. It's some of it, some of it is mental. I, I, don't, I don't want to dismiss... Um, resources either right oh, yeah. we, a social work, we constantly do that but some of it's mental but then you know we have these mental blocks and then you have institutional blocks mm -hmm. you have messages that we receive especially in my my um folks i see of color right so we have these messages about who we are what we're not and what we're not capable of or capable yeah so you got to like navigate your way all through that rubbish of stuff that you learn about that's not true right, right? so it's it's um it's fascinating it's fascinating and then and then for them to be able to decipher what is truth and what is not true you know because you just hear so much yeah 95 percent of that negative stuff is not true yep. but you hear it so much it's repetition it's repetition it's repetition brainwashed programmed you know it's like tape, right yeah and you don't it's even so know bad. that you're believing in it but it shows you know it's, it's manifesting the things that we do yeah. So, you know, I know people don't use tapes anymore, but, you know, I still use a tape analogy. If I'm only listening to side A of that tape and it's playing the same thing over and over and over, that's all I know. Yeah. You flip it over. That's a yeah. whole other side to that. And that's usually how we are. Like, what, what's on the other side of that? Right. 
And that's what I'm hoping that people can see, you know, with me and think, what's on the other side of fear, anger, frustration, the trauma? Right? Yeah. I had, yeah, I had to, I had to get over fear and all that, Mac, man. But I, you know, I pushed through all that. But yeah, I, I do need to go talk to somebody. <laughs> I do. No, I, I've known that for a long time, though. I do. I do. and and I am not. Uh, I can't say I'm in a bad space, but I just know that just for me, I just want to go and and just know because I know there's some things there that's holding me back that that's allowing me that's not allowing me to grow in certain areas that I even. I know that I want to grow in, or I'm like, man, why can't why can I not change this? Mm-hmm. And I try so hard, but it, it's. But you know what? Mm. Ask, is it working for you? Wait, say that again. Is it working for you? What I want to change? No. So I, when clients are talking about their fear and what gets in the way, I ask them, how does it work for you? Because somehow it has worked for you. Oh yeah, because you... it works because it keeps you. You know, I'm not gonna go over there, so that's dangerous territory. Right. Or it works in a sense of we don't know. I'm scared to see what if I step out there and it's not what I thought. Yeah. So somehow, even those fears and uncertainties, they 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 kind of serve the purpose in our life a little bit. It's protection. Yeah. So if we strip that away, now what? <laughs> you gotta fly. I gotta go into the <laughs> unknown territory, right? Right. Um, yeah. But it's a process. We we hold on that we hold on to narratives about ourselves that we've heard because it's it's become part of our a mental right of- well, maybe maybe some people need to go and explore that just so they can see what's on the other side and they see what's on the other side it's like hmm okay now i know but i still don't want that we right. can we can continue on because mm-hmm. what i'm doing is not hurting me yeah. but you want to know mm-hmm. I, and i will say like i see i see clients ranging from you know, like trauma major depressive disorder to you know i just want to process my life right i just want to talk out loud about do i want to go to this new job you know do i want to divorce my spouse you know do i want to you know move out of state some of the things you address in in therapy is not always these major life changing things it can just be a place to talk out loud to a mutual person because you really start to solve your own stuff to be honest with you yeah it's insightful yeah right you're like oh damn i do right some of this is validation you need somebody you know to help validate you a little bit yeah, man. Yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad we had this conversation, though. I really am. I know there's some people watching or gonna watch that need to see this, need to hear this. I needed to hear this. So, yeah. And can I say this? Interview, interview clinicians, right? Mm-hmm. I like when folks come and ask me about myself and what I'm specializing in. Right? I think some of that too, when you're like for folks looking for therapists, they don't know what to look for. Yeah. There's different le- level of therapists. There's LCSWs, there's psychologists, there's psychiatrists, right? So understanding people's scope of practice and what they do is important because you may go see someone that specialize in substance abuse, right? But you're like, mm, I want somebody to specialize in trauma or specialize in mood disorder. So yeah. you can look at people's bios and you can read and ask questions. Ask can you have a free consultation. So, right? so, so real quick, in a nutshell, differentiate psychologists and psychiatrists because a lot of us don't know okay so psychiatrist they medication oh some psychiatrists will do therapy many psychiatrists will not do therapy with you you come in you tell them your symptoms they're going to diagnose you and give you a medication okay. a prescription gotcha so i've noticed clients when they come see me they're like oh my last therapist didn't do this so when I'm saying, tell me about your therapist, I'm like, baby, you saw a psychiatrist. You can see, <laughs> you, which it, well, some will do so, therapy, but many, okay. many will not do therapy. You come see us. So they went, so, you know, so they, they basically were like one flew over the cuckoo's nest. You you went to somebody who's going to throw a pill in your mouth and you start blurting out craziness. In, 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 a, in, a, in, a, in a sense. In a sense, um, yeah. I, I don't, I don't, um, it's not no anti-medicine. But I'm also like, how do we start at the 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 least, right? How do we, you know, not saying you don't need maybe an antidepressant or whatever, not saying that. Right. But start here. But that shouldn't be the first thing that's thrown out there. Like the medicine can can the medicine help? Yeah, but then there's other pieces. I, that's a whole other story. But there's other things that you can do for wellness. Yeah. Right. Um, now, do I have clients that are just chemically? depressed that are not producing whatever dopamine or whatever they need for their brain. I, yes. And they do get something. Okay. Do I have clients that are having some medical issues that may 
um, sorry, so, so, some lifestyle issues that's contributing to their depression and anxiety. Yeah, so if we talk about lifestyle change, guess what's going to happen? You may not need that medicine. <laughs> yeah. And that's what I was going to say, too. Sometimes you, I would think that you want to go to a psychologist first so you can get an understanding. And then if you need that medicine, you get on that medicine. Because it's like, how can you get a clear understanding doped up? That's how I look at it. Mm -hmm. And so for, for me, so when someone's coming to see me, you know, I ask, are oh, you on medication? And, you know, some, some, yes, some no. Um, but if there's no, but if we've been working together and I'm like, God, they're really struggling. Like they're real something, you know, they may need a mood stabilizer. Mm -hmm. And I feel for medication like I feel for anything else. If I'm a diabetic and I need to take some medicine, if I have some mental, some mental health, some mental impairments or something going on with me and I have to take a medication, mm -hmm. that's where the stigma comes from. Mm -hmm. Why do we separate it so? And I think that's why people are scared. If I know I am struggling because maybe my brain and body is not producing the chemicals it need, let's, let's get you referred over to see somebody, right? So you can have a therapist, me, and then you can have someone that prescribes your medicine. Okay. For me, because I practice integrated healthcare, I'm, I'm talking to your I'm talking to your, your doctor. Like, how are they doing? How are they doing in therapy? How are they doing with their meds, right? I know this mood is getting better. Can you, you know, we're gonna take them off the medicine now that we've had a change in X, Y, and Z. So I think that's so important to have providers if you want to do this as talking to one another and keep yeah. you in a loop and you talking about how you're doing and it's because that stuff is not separated right and there's medical issues that contribute to depression oh wow there's medical issues that contribute to anxiety so for me you know when i meet a client i'm asking about when the last time you went to the doctor when the last time you had you know our gut 90 percent of our serotonin is made in our gut serotonin is a mood stabilizer we need that to feel happy and good Right. But if we don't educate folks on that stuff, they don't know. Yeah. And the psychiatrist is going, just going to keep shoveling the, the medicine in them as long as they go back saying, I Boom. feel this way, I feel that I feel way, I feel this way. And, and that's yeah. their scope. That's all they're going to do. Well, I, I've worked like, with some amazing psychiatrists that before they prescribe, they'll say, go see Tasha. Yeah. And that's the way it should be. I see Tasha, come, we, we'll, we'll talk. Right. I met some psychiatrists, I've had some psychiatrists I work with that says, this doesn't sound like a psych issue. It sounds like a medical issue where I want you to go see a doctor to make sure you're not sleeping because probably you have sleep apnea. Yeah, right. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's integrated healthcare. We need to figure out what, what pieces of us need that healing and so we can put it all together. Yeah. Then you have some that's going to push you those pills and that's it. Yeah. And that's when you should feel taken advantage of because I think then then it's all about the money. It's like, let me just grab this medicine mm -hmm. and take advantage of that insurance. <laughs> <laughs> right there's new there's new stuff on you there's new new right exactly yeah. and listen but before we wrap this up i have a couple of myths that i'm gonna throw out to you and i just kind of want your opinion on it all right okay. can we go there mm -hmm. all right so here's myth number one therapy is for people with serious issues myth <laughs> <laughs> right we just touched on that no sometimes yeah. you need to come in and just talk about life stuff right all right talking about do she want to have a baby in therapy wow you know it's, it's but that's real though it's real but that's yeah. a burden on some people because they can't get over that they just don't know the answer to it mm -hmm. yeah so that's a myth therapy is for if you breathe and walking and if you ain't walking <laughs> right wheelchair therapy's for everybody all right Here, here's a good one uh okay. therapists can help only if they've experienced the same thing <laughs> myth, myth. Yeah, we have been trained. Not only do we have, we get trained, right? But we also have responsibility because I have to do CEU. So we're constantly in um, training mode. It don't stop. It don't stop once we get those degrees and we walk off. Yeah, yeah. Our licenses um, um, hold us accountable to keeping us, you know, on top of the latest uh, therapeutic modalities, on top of the latest, um, you know, interventions. But not just our license, but we as clinicians, I know myself, I'm constantly seeking ways to learn and do something different. Okay. So, yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. Sometimes that can hurt if, they, if they've been through the things you've been through, if they haven't healed. Right. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. Here's number four. No. Okay. Where are we at? Number three? Number three. three. Right, so we talked about this too. So this one, I already know what you're going to say. Therapists are all about the money. <laughs> I think I started by saying I, I think I probably have <laughs> during the pandemic Eric no joke during the pandemic I saw 
And we still in it. The beginning of it, 15 people. No pay. Wow. Told you, girl, you're doing God's work. <laughs> That's why I, I always say, you know, it's, I get my reward. Yeah. Anyway. Not always financial. Not always financial. Yeah, for sure. I was going to say that. You, you will be blessed. You are blessed. You know? I pay it for it. That's what I can do. For sure. I am not doing that today, though. No pitching. <laughs> <laughs> Nah, listen, they done got all them no, stimulus sure. checks. They can pay. I am very blessed. I do acknowledge that. Yeah, for sure. All right. Um, therapy, number four. Therapy is common sense. No, <laughs> it is not common sense. If that's the case, <laughs> it's not common sense. It's complicated. It is a process. It's more than just talking. It's modalities. It's methods. It's learning people, right? Understanding development too is important. Yeah. Now, what do you say to this one? This is the last one. And this is kind of kind of the same thing, but therapy is unnecessary where you can just talk to good friends. <laughs> I didn't hear I mean, that so much. Right. Um, because even talking to good friends, we're they're not doing an exploration with us. They's not they're not well maybe, depending, I doubt it, talking about ways and digging up that stuff that we need to talk about and learning healthier ways to deal with it. Yeah. Some of our good friends gonna amen us. Y'all yeah. do the same thing. Yep. You no, yep. we don't need that. Yeah. Right? Or just we console you. To, yeah. Tell you tell you what you want to hear to make you feel better. Oh it ain't that bad or you know da, 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 da. yeah. That's the worst you can do. Yeah. The worst you can do. Yeah. Yeah, that's like an alcoholic. Our friends, are, our friends are all gonna be biased. I don't care what they say. We all have biases. Yeah, exactly is trained not to have those biases we, we want to see it see the entire picture yeah they're going to just see that half yeah you definitely just gotta you know it, it's, it's almost like anybody just admitting to themselves that they have a problem so how, yeah. how is that helping at all you know yeah. so yeah all right so that, that, those, that those are the myths those are the, they all miss <laughs> <laughs> all miss wrap it all up wrap it all up well, listen, I really, really appreciate you coming on, spending this time to just be very transparent. Like, I've learned so much tonight for myself. Like, I'm going to go back and watch this. <laughs> you got to go back and watch it. But it's, and I'm going to say therapy can be a beautiful thing. It's a journey. You got to find that right therapist to go on the journey with you. Yeah. That's the yeah. Not every therapist is fit to go on the journey with you. You got to find that, that connection, that rapport. No, okay, so here's the thing too. When you, because you were saying you got to interview the therapist. Well, yes, they, do they give, okay, here's a question for everybody want to know about the money. Do they give free consultations? Can you go in and speak to the therapist before they? Uh, some will. Some will put on their website if they provide consultation, or you can just ask, right? Okay. Um, and it's typically not you coming in. It may be a phone, a phone. Like I do 15 minutes free consultations, I let them know I don't diagnose. But if you want to get a feel for who I am on a phone call, like, hey, mm -hmm. this is what I'm going through. Do you specialize in this? Okay. There's so many links now that you can like go to, like little websites, and okay. I can share some with you. Things that ask your, your your clinician. Okay. Right. Their specialty, how long they've been in this, you know, little things like that. So there's all these questions. You can just kind of write them down and say, hey, I can I do that. Right. Mm -hmm. But I do 15 minutes. They don't come in because coming in, you're taking somebody's time right. usually. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. So I do a 15 minute consultation. Okay, that's great. And that's good to know because I'm, I'm pretty sure people that have not even dug into it to see what it is, they don't know that. Yeah. So it's good. I have people. clinician friends that um, on Fridays, they just they do have people come in and do consultations with them, right? Oh, wow. But for myself, because my schedule is crazy, yeah. I do phone calls. They can talk to me 15 minutes, no charge. Right. And, and you can get a good feel. Talking. You can get a good feel yeah. for somebody, you know, mm -hmm. personality wise, if they, you know, if they really are open. Yeah. They're hearing you out instead of just going off a checklist. You can tell in 15 minutes. Yes. So, yeah. yeah. And that therapist can tell too, can I help you truly? Like I, I truly believe there's times where I t I've said to a, a potential client, I may not be the therapist for you. Mm. Okay. And I have said that. And I said, you know what? But I have a colleague that specialize in getting good, this. And that's right? good. Because I would be, I would do a disjustice to clients of, to, to see someone knowing that I know someone else out there in the community that is Freaking amazing yeah. with addictions. Yeah. I need you to go see this person because he specializes in gambling addiction, right? Right. As clinicians, we have to do that. We have to be honest about what we do and what we can't do. So that's not fair to people. Right. 
And I can imagine, speaking of like gambling addictions, and I know you said you got somebody who's amazing, but out there in Vegas, I'm sure. And I never even thought of it, really thought about that. I'm sure that's heavy. Heavy. Yeah. Yes. So I have um I have clients that I've co-shared with other clinicians, right? So where I may have seen this particular client working on maybe marital stuff, right? And then they may be going somewhere else to work on some addiction stuff, right? Oh. So I'm very transparent about what I do, what I don't do. Uh, I'm transparent about, you know, my scope, right? Folks, oh, can you can you prescribe medicine? We do not prescribe. LCSWs do not prescribe medications. Right. Um, can you get do disability for me? Could I? Yes, but will I now? No. I need to be seeing you, right? So some folks are coming in wanting, uh, wanting. Nobody coming in trying to hit a lick. Yeah, yeah. Like I'm trying to get on disability. Okay, well I need to see you for a while. I need to see if this truly worth doing disability paperwork. Right. So you um, I'm very off on that. about what I do. Mm-hmm. You sign off on that. You ain't never seeing them again. Yeah. I ain't gonna never see. Them again. <laughs> I got some really calling me. Talking about, yeah, what's going on with this? Like, I don't know. <laughs> right. Then, then they gonna pop up later. Well, you know, I need to research it. <laughs> I need right. to research it. Where, where you come from? <laughs> hey, nah. so it, it's so much. But I, yeah, I send you that link. So there's a link about questions that you can ask clinicians. You know, just to kind of get your get an idea about what they do. Okay. Cool. Cool. Yeah. And I'll share that. I'll share that so, with the community too. Is that okay? I can share this. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. The community about, needs it. You know, I, I don't. I love sharing information. That, that's, yeah. That's important. Yeah. Well, well, well. We thank you for coming on here, sharing all of this information. You're I really welcome. need this. I really hope that uh, the viewers can take this and 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 do something about it. You know what I mean? Do something about whatever they're going through, and just kind of get in there and, and figure some things out, and, or just see. You know, you may be happy. Absolutely. Just see. You know, maybe you want to go to therapy to continue to work on being happy, right? Right. So, so. Right. Um, I will say another thing too. You can ask clinicians now that we're in a pandemic, right? Some folks aren't comfortable going out. A lot of clinicians are offering telehealth. I do telehealth. Mm-hmm. I do in office and then I do online like we're doing now. Yeah, so just yeah. asking like what type of services you provide it. Can I do a telehealth session? Is that possible? Mm, you know, know that may be something that may be something key for our community because we ain't trying. You know, what I mean, you, you know what it is. So just to kind of get their feet wet. Yes. Hey, do the telehealth. Mm-hmm. See how it works. You know, you're in your own comfort of your home. You're comfortable. And if this person really gets in there and, and digs and you can feel like, man, I, I really felt like that was helpful, then I want to see you. boom, could change your life. I've, I've got more clients that way than I have just, you know, ooh, I'm nervous to get to an office. Yeah. I've had clients I see telehealth and we've been doing, I think, one client, four sessions. And now she's like, Tasha, I want to come to your office. And I'm like, come on, right? Because I, I do believe in energy and yeah. I want to be in space with you. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so ask if they're doing telehealth if you're a little nervous and apprehensive about going into an office. Oh no, I'm going in. But for everybody no, I'm just, else, in general, just for the audience. Yeah, okay? yeah, I'm I'm going in. Yeah, I need to see you. I I, I <laughs> run head first, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, my, my therapist tried to do, have me do telehealth this week. I was like, oh no, we canceling. I need to be in the office. <laughs> right. I want out of this energy. I need to step out of this and be in your space. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. I need that energy and that vibration. Mm. Yes, I Lord. I need it. I need it. Well, listen, thank you so much for thank real you. coming on. It's been an honor. It's been a pleasure. Uh, Anytime. Yes, yes, yes. And um, uh, tell us how they can, how anybody can get in touch with you about your clinic. And, you know, um, in so Vegas. I, have, I know you're in Vegas. Um, so. I do a, I do a free, and I haven't been keeping up like I want to, but I do have a free um, Instagram page I've started. I'm going to be starting doing more stuff on that page. Um talking more about wellness and integrated health care and just kind of bringing in topics around how certain things plays into your mental health. Okay. So that's something I'm going to be providing free of charge. I'm not going to do, I'm not going to charge for that. I'm okay. um, so going to be starting that probably December 1. Okay. Um, just topics, but also kind of just dropping because we talk about those consultations where people can just drop me a few questions. Okay. And depending on where they stay, you know, will I be able to offer them some type of, um, some type of referral. For me right now, I'm gonna be honest, my plate is full. So I <laughs> I um, am not taking new clients right now. Okay. Um, I am in the process of working on some things. Um, so just in full dis- dis- uh, disclosure, my ultimate goal is to for real have an integrated clinic. Okay. So right now, you know, I have an office space, I get referrals in, you know, we, I, we co-share, we rent the space. Right. I'm a clinician in our butt. Um, my goal is that, right? A true wellness clinic where we're, I'm saying I'm doing the yoga mat, right? Okay. And let's, let's, let's do some stuff in here. 
Um, now, what you were talking about as far as on January, is that another, is that a different handle? From um, No, so it's the one, I think I sent you that one, the, the Instagram one. Now, on Facebook, I have a private group. My private group on, on Facebook is um, it's only women that's in that group. Okay. So women are thinking about joining it. So on, in the private group for women, we talk a lot about just kind of some, some women issues and disparities to healthcare. On Instagram, it's just open to anybody. Okay. Um, for the groups I will be doing on Instagram, it will be open to anyone. So I'm going to kind of start hosting some free stuff here, too. Okay. Yeah. And everybody, I will have all of the links down below in the description so you can go down there, check it out. If you want to get in touch with Natasha, ask some questions. Yeah. Don't get too technical because you got <laughs> to come out your, you gotta like come out your purse now. You got to <laughs> come out your purse, you get too technical. But she, you know, simple yeah, questions, you know, I'm pretty sure she'd be willing to help you out. Yeah. I think um, information is important. I don't mind sharing information because that's how we learn and we, and we grow. Yeah. Right. So I'm not, I'm not going to, I don't charge for everything because I, you know, that's ridiculous. That's how you lose people that way. Yeah, exactly. That's why I started this show, to be honest with you, because there's a lot of people out here that don't know what they need to know, and yeah. everybody wants to charge them a thousand dollars for a webinar and this and that. And third, I'm like, listen, man, yeah, play my oh, part in the ecosystem and yeah. bring people like you on here that can shed some light on some things for people. You know That's, what I mean? Absolutely. Well, I appreciate you, but anytime, anytime, I, I'm, I'm here. All right, Natasha Mosley, everybody. Uh, yes clinical social worker and therapist she is doing her thing hit her up got any questions i oh, man loved it loved it thank you so thank much you, you. listen well, I'm head home. <laughs> huh? so i guess i head on to my babies now and put on my other hat yeah hey yeah. you said you got you said you're busy out there yeah. but keep it going That's you're doing a wonderful awesome. amazing job thank you i appreciate it definitely well, hey guys I'll share the links and then i will reach out if they have any questions yeah for sure they will be in the description so Everything will be there for you. And share that one link to me. Yes. One link so I can share that Absolutely. as well. I'll, I'll put that in the description for sure. So, okay. But yeah, everybody, once again, we are here. We're wrapping it up. Episode 96, y'all. Every Tuesday night, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You know where I'm at. We're over here kicking it. You never know who I might have, so be sure to tune in. Share, share, share the page. Subscribe. Whatever, man. Follow us on Instagram. Cool card, Natasha underscore Simone. Here we are, y'all. Hey, until next time, peace and love. Appreciate y'all for tuning in. Get out of here. Peace. Bye.